And welcome back. Uh, we are here at race 10 for the National County Championships. This is the under 16 open category. So in this, we've got four counties again. And those four counties from berth one, close to the start line in the white boat, which is Len White, is uh, Devon. Isles of Scilly are rowing the varnish boat, which is Carrick. Cornwall are rowing the, the light blue boat, which is Talisman. And Dorset on the far side, rowing the black boat off spray. So this is going to be uh, quite an interesting race. I think we will see what happens in this one. Um, I've personally been help coach the uh, Isles of Scilly crew at Truro on this one. So I'm going to try and be as <laughs> neutral as I can on the commentary. But you can probably guess who I, you think I'm I'm hoping to win but off the start it's going to be pretty heated and see what happens on the uh, drone footage so between Devon, Isles of Scilly and Cornwall it's pretty level I, th I would say Cornwall have just got an edge over Isles of Scilly at the moment but it's still early days we'll see what happens when they change a gear and they find their rhythm Cornwall have got a slight advantage on this first bit they've got the inside line of this left dog leg Cornwall now on the drone, obviously, they look very uh, level, but from my angle, it's hard to tell. <laughs> it looks like Cornwall ahead, heading forward. But a uh, Isles of Scilly still hanging on there, pushing really hard. Apologies, it's not uh, this category that I was helping coach. It was the under-18s. <laughs> uh, this is under-16s. So I'm getting myself too excited. But they're doing fantastic. You're back, be, you're back to being a neutral again, Jay. So that's good. So uh, I think... Um, so. Uh, we've also got a bit of Cornwall support on the boat, as you can hear. So, uh, so yeah, we're, we're seeing Cornwall ahead. We're seeing uh, Isles of Scilly's in second. I don't know how many of the Isles of Scilly's crew are the winning crew from uh, yesterday. Oh, good shot um, yesterday, yeah. Yeah, so whether that's that's full crew or whether they've changed them around, obviously this is the whole of the Isles of Scilly's, whereas previously it was, it was just the St Mary's, but I, I'm not sure whether uh, that uh, Isles of Scilly's crew is made up of more than one club. Um, but if it is, then uh, that means that 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 Cornwall crew are absolutely amazing because we've already seen how good uh, that Isles of Scilly's crew were in the, in the open yeah. race. So um, some really, really strong rowing. Um, so Cornwall are about a boat length ahead and they're just slowly opening that up um, as we head up down towards that, that first mark. Uh, but yeah, it's quite a battle. They've opened up quite a big gap, to be fair, over uh, in third place, I think, is the uh, Dorset crew. But uh, still up alongside them, really. And only just about in fourth is uh, the, the Devon crew. Uh, so they're in their own little race here. OK, there's some, there's some pushes going in. I can hear both coxes now uh, just coming up towards the umpire boat. Not a lot in it. Big bit of swell coming up. Uh, see whether that affects either boat. Yeah, they're right on the umpire boat. Uh, I think Cornwall are going to have it. Um, but oh, the Sillies put a really, really big push in uh, to get that. And it looks like they've probably got the higher boat speed now. Um, so they're going to have to be a little bit careful. Uh, the other Sillies boat needing to give the Cornwall boat a bit of room as they come round the mark. Def definitely don't want to follow right in on their um, on their rudder uh, so yeah a few boat lengths coming in they look fairly tight coming into the this turn they're not coming out wide like some of the other crews have done um, that's going to be because the Cornwall Cox is trying to defend that position um, although he's got water if he leaves a big gap uh, the Isles of Scilly's crew will still be straight in there the Isles of Scilly's crew now coming out much much wider um, Hopefully they can get that turn. They're kind of just giving themselves more of a turn to have to do by waiting quite late to swing out. Still quite a good race on between uh, the Devon and the Dorset crews. I think uh, Devon further ahead, but whether Dorset got uh, the call on yeah, that one. Dorset got the water over Devon. Yeah. Um, you've got to bear in mind with the new rules is that a, uh, you, 
yes, you might have the water, but if you're going to leave an opening and slow your boat down, thinking that, oh, I can just walk, go around at my own pleasure, just bear in mind that, yes, yeah. as long as they don't yeah, impede so, them. Yeah, so <laughs> don't, Devon have gone quite wide there and, and uh, Dorset taken advantage. So, um, uh, but, you know, in coming in really tight, it does mean that the, uh, the Dorset crew lost a lot of boat speed. Uh, I think we're coming back around to the uh, the front of the race again. So uh, it's pretty even, isn't it? Coming out of the turns, I, I wouldn't think that they've yeah, they've gained or lost anything there. So the, these two crews still fairly close to each other. Yeah. So okay, I think we're just following the uh, the footage into that second mark. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Devon had a really good good attack, but yeah, I think uh, it's still looking like the um, the Dorset crew. Uh, they're lifting their oars over there, and the Devon crew just coming out a little bit wider and keeping a bit more boat speed, uh, but having to wait a little bit longer before they're coming back on. So um, Cornwall, uh, possibly, I think, uh, other sillies are starting to sneak up on them, are they? I th yeah. yeah, a little bit. So it's, um, it's close between these. This definitely isn't decided yet. And there'll be quite a rival be rivalry between these two crews as well. Um, obviously, this is the first, uh, first time that we've had Isles of Scillies represented as their own uh, county, <laughs> if you want to call it that, uh, with their own region. Um, so normally, these two crews uh, could have been combined together. So. So there's going to be quite a rivalry, and yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll hand back over to Jay. Yeah, he's getting quite excited because it looks like we're getting a race on here. Yeah, it's super exciting here, and we're running out of time. And I've been requested every race to try and call out everyone that's in each boat, and we keep forgetting to do it. So quickly, and Isles of Silly for rowing for Isles of Silly, Cox in them. We got James, Thomas, uh, Ben, Tom, Jake. Inigo and Roscoe rowing for Isles of Scilly for the under 16 Cornwall crew. But yeah, Isles of Scilly have caught up. They're coming, They're coming up for them. They're <laughs> try, going to try and push for it. They've got about another 300 yards to go, so anything can happen. Cornwall need to keep calm, keep cool. Make sure that they keep pushing on to make sure that Isles of Silly don't catch up on them. They are doing that very thing, but every stroke that Isles of Silly are doing is closing the gap every single time. This is going to be pretty close. They're still going for it. We'll see what happens. But I think they've got only about 30 strokes and they're going to be done unless. Corn will mess something up now. But I don't think they will. And it is Cornwall that are going to go in for gold in first place. And second place will go to Isles of Silly. There will be a race on for third place near the end of this. But well done to Cornwall. Huge effort. Fantastic row. They have got it. There's the hooter. They are number one in the national counties. And ours are silly, absolutely devastated. They put in such an effort to try and get first place. But well rode, boys. Fantastic. But a huge thanks, to, uh, well done to uh, Dave Matthews, Cox and that crew, Barnaby Clark, Dylan Williams, Evanette Richards, Joe Seaton, Monty Lane, and Reese Bird. So Reese and Dave from Charlestown. Barnaby, Ev uh, Evan and Monty from Foy, Joe from Mounts Bay and Dylan from Williams. Huge well done. We'll be seeing you at the remote award ceremony later on. But going back to third place, when those two boats went over the line, there was a bit of a scrap earlier on for third place. Dorset were leading the race and Devon have now pulled through and they're doing that classic shouting how many strokes they're doing like they were doing at the Junior Internationals yesterday. A huge well done to that junior crew. You've now got yourself a third place medal for this later on. And also a huge effort 
from Dorset. You can see they're tired. Their heads are bowed down. Advice if you can, keep your heads high. Get that oxygen running through your body. Huge effort. Well done, guys. Good at racing. Right, we're going to take another short break um, for until race 11, which will be the under-14 girls. Um, the starter is asking for them to come over, so we won't be too long. We'll see you shortly. Okay, welcome back. This is a uh, race 11, under-14s girls. So we've got three crews in this one. We've got Cornwall, Devon and Dorset. So Cornwall in Petrock, which is the white boat, which is closest to us, followed by the blue boat, uh, which is a uh, Devon, and the red boat in the far distance, which is Dorset. So uh, uh, we'll see what happens in this one. Obviously, a few of these, quite a few, hopefully most of these uh, uh, girls that are in here were rowing yesterday at the Junior International Championships, um, putting on a big show. We'll see what happens. Um, so they've lined up and off they go. So we'll see what happens on this one. Um, nice controlled start from Cornwall. Big dig outs before they whipped it up. Devon going straight in for the whip up and also Dorset going for a two deep long strokes and then whipped it up again. We'll see what happens in this race. So rowing for a uh, Devon, we have world's smallest print that has been given to me there we go so I'm gonna leave Dev in a second because I've got half of the page missing again but for Cornwall uh, Cox and then we've got Rihanna Bailey from Carradon Alicia Pugh from Foy Florence Wilde from Helford Holly Sedwick from Helford Elijah Hignett from Carradon, uh, Lucy Pring from Pendine, and then also Phoebe Go Gilbert from Helford for the Cornwall crew. Three in a, three in a line here, isn't it, Jay? It's, yeah. uh, this, is, this is quite close racing, so uh, we're seeing Cornwall slightly out ahead, but there's not a lot in it at all in this race. They're really kind of sticking together as a group. Um, there's not a lot of room between them either, is there? They're probably getting fairly tight. I don't know whether we're seeing on the drain footage, um, or maybe it's just the view we're getting. It looks a little bit closer than it is, but um, yeah, and we're seeing Cornwall now just starting to sneak out a little bit and leave the other two crews uh, behind them. So yeah, Cornwall in first, I would say Devon in second by a metre or two, uh, and then uh, Dorset in third. But yeah, this looks like a nice close race. Uh, should be getting pretty close coming into the marks. Hopefully they can stay together as a group, um, you know, and we can see how this plays out. Again, this is an under-14 uh, race, wasn't it? So we do see sometimes that some of the crew's tie will get stronger um, at different points in the race. So, quick, quick call out from Dorset. So, rowing in Dorset, we've got Becky from Lyre Regis, Autumn from Lyre Regis, Ava from uh, Swanage, Olivia from Weymouth, Rosie from uh, Swanage, Hannah from Weymouth, and Jessica from Weymouth. I'm just waiting to get back the, the crew list from Devon because I've got half of it missing. Unless, Ben, you know most of them. Uh, I, I don't actually in this one, though. No. We haven't got any uh, teen crews in this one. Um, but it looks like Devon, uh, they're, they're get, they seem to come back a bit stronger now, uh, heading back up towards Cornwall. And, it's close at the moment. We've got about another two minutes rowing. By the moment, they're in a position where they could push to get water uh, coming into this first mark. So, so yeah, Devon really finding something in this sort of middle third of this leg. I can hear the, uh, the, the Cornwall cocks there as well. Just keeping them nice and calm, but driving them forwards. A little, little shout from some of them in the Cornwall crew. Uh, so they're having a bit of a push. I'm sure that uh, Devon crew are going to start to push back again. So uh, this is—I always notice this in the in the particularly in the under-14s races—is there's quite a sort of ebb and flow of, of boat speed, and they, um, you know, they they push at different points in the race. Um, so Cornwall have had that push. At the moment, they've got a little bit clear water, and they've got about 
six boat lengths to the to the call. So at the moment they're good, but one big push from Devon could get them up on the inside. We're looking for the bow of Florence to get up alongside the cocks of the uh, the Cornwall boat. If they manage to do that in about the next four or five boat lengths, and they've got better boat speed at the moment, they could get the call. Uh, time's running out a little bit for them, I think, but they've made a really, really big effort at trying to do that. So, yeah, just coming past, you can see the uh, the umpire boat there, just alongside. Uh, the call will have been made. We can't hear the call. Yeah, okay, yes, we did hear the call, yeah. So, uh, Florence is being told you do not have the mark. Uh, so, they need to be careful now because they're so close uh, to the Cornwall crew just to make sure they give the Cornwall crew room to get around that mark, uh, don't impede any of their rowers. So, and it looks like they're just kind of taking the power off the Devon crew, just to give themselves a little bit of space. Um, they don't want to follow right in on the stern of that boat. Both crews coming in quite close. Uh, I think possibly the tide's moved around because that green can seems particularly <laughs> in the way of the racing line now. Um, I think that boy's probably just moved a little bit as the, the the tide's changed. Uh, really close with that Devon crew. They've hogged that boy coming round. Uh, pretty even, I think. The uh, Cornwall crew are getting away quite nicely uh, out of that turn. Yeah, and I think the Devon crew just lost a little bit more boat speed, just where they turned a little bit tighter. Uh, Dorset coming into the mark now. Oars are going over. It's so there's so, such a short distance between these uh, two marks that crews don't really get a chance to settle in before they're straight back into the, the next turn. So Cornwall coming around the second mark, keeping some good boat speed. We saw this a little bit at the, uh, the Nuki Championships with uh, that option of whether to lift your oars over that second mark. Uh, you lose some power but you can turn tighter in. So uh, probably a bit more of advantage here than there was at Newquay, uh, but the crew's just, just taking different options there. So boat length of clear water, I reckon, between these two crews. Um, yeah, Cornwall looking very tidy. Their timing's good. They're watching that boat behind, pushing off. It's always easier being the boat ahead, looking back over the cox's shoulder, and trying to build the gap. Sometimes when you're that boat, you know there's a boat there over your shoulder, but if you can't see it, sometimes the effort's just slightly less. So uh, I think it looks like it's Amy again coxing the, uh, the Devon crew. She's going to be pushing them now. She's going to be telling them that they're close. She's going to be telling them that they can do this. It is a good battle, this one. First and second, only a few boat lengths in it. Um, so, uh, Jay's just shown me the uh, crew list for, for Devon. Um, Can we read it out? I think, we... yeah, if you read it out, because yeah. I... I <laughs> Same I'm again. I'm battling a little bit with cables and, uh, and cameras at the moment. Yeah, like I said, do bear with us, because uh, normally we are just got challenged with commentating, but now we're uh, flipping through paper, holding cameras, looking pretty talking to a uh, pilot boat <laughs> a long time ago jay <laughs> <laughs> okay so moving on so uh, in this devon crew we've got uh, amy plowman coxing esme uh, kilbane uh, from dart uh, poppy from dart lexi from brixham victoria from a uh, barnstable and robin from brixham um, putting on a real good show there so a huge effort from those Dev devon girls but uh, yeah, it looks like Cornwall there uh, going in again for the victory uh, over for this whole race. But they're looking calm, looking cool, um, looking really relaxed. And looking very happy, I think, as well. Yeah. I uh, can see the number three row. Where, uh, I don't know whether that's her, <laughs> the face she pulls when she's putting lots of effort, but she looks, she's definitely smiling. She's enjoying this race, uh, which is really good to see. Yeah, good, good on them. Uh, that's what I say. And it just should get. So it's really amazing, uh, obviously, how well there's hardly any weight in these barrels. I've never seen so much waterline on these gigs before. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so yeah, the number three row, uh, uh, Laura was just telling me, uh, started rowing this year, so uh, look at that, <laughs> that's phenomenal. Uh, any of you watching that are rowing these know that it's a long process, learning to row these, uh, these gigs properly uh, uh, and learn this technique. Um, so that, that's really, really impressive to, uh, to pick up that, that level of rowing technique in one year. So we're about uh, eight or nine boat lengths off the finish. So I think Cornwall going to be um, going to be fairly happy that they're they're getting this one. They've kind of uh, fought off a, a very strong uh, Devon challenge um, under 14. So that's promising for for Devon going forwards. Um, that they'll be having uh, you know a strong under 14s, which will become an under 16s, under 18s, under 25s open uh, going forward. So here they come, last few strokes towards the line. Keeping it looking really nice and tidy. You can hear the support uh, from the land now. Uh, all the Cornwall supporters starting to cheer them as they come across. Last few strokes. So that's the under 14s girls. Cornwall are the winners. They've done it. Really strong row. They had a good challenge there from the Devon crew. Really nice rowing from the Devon crew. Yeah, so they're over. They're not much in it at all on no. between those two crews. So uh, that, that's a fantastic race. The oars are up there uh, for the Cornwall girls. Yeah, you can hear the uh, the three cheers being shouted. Devon just grabbing a few lungfuls of air. Uh, and you can see that it looks like the Devon girls, are pro they look a little bit disappointed. I think they thought maybe they could take it, but um, yeah, they, they should be really proud of, of that row. That's, um, that's a really, really strong row against, we know, a very strong uh, Cornish crew. Uh, just coming up towards the line, we've got the, uh, the Dorset crew in Bridian, uh, pushing hard again towards the line. <laughs> you can see them just looking over their shoulder just to see how far they've got. Um, yeah, and there they come. So well done to, uh, to Dorset. That's third place for that crew. Okay, we're going to shoot back over towards the, the start line and it's race 12, the under 18 open next. Cool, and we're back there, super quick turnover. We're trying to squeeze in these two races quickly uh, as there is a, a big old tanker coming in, so it's going to take up most of the afternoon. So we're trying to race and squeeze as many races as we can and not get any delays like we did yesterday. So this is the uh, race 12, the under 18s open. Um, so I've got to try and keep myself as neutral as I can because this is the crew that I've been helping coach for the last uh, few weeks. Um, for Isles of Silly, but we'll go from left to right. So from nearest to the start boat, in the black boat is uh, Dorset in Offspray. In the varnish boat is uh, Ca varnish boat Carrick is Isles of Silly, boys. Uh, and then in the white boat, we've got uh, Devron in Lem White. And in the light blue boat on the far side is Cornwall. So they're off, they've started, the drone's up. And looking at it, Cornwall is lead in this race, um, but it is early days. So we'll see what happens. We've had some exciting races from the other uh, categories where things got changed up fairly quickly. So um, huge good racing here so far. Um, but Isles of Silly are not going to let Cornwall low, let go. So they're going to try and push them and try and catch them down. But really exciting racing here. We'll see what happens throughout this. What do you think then? Yeah, I've noticed uh, Alza Silly's five rower has um, forgotten his team kit. Um, it's definitely not that warm here today, <laughs> so that's very brave. Um, so, yeah, but there's a big race on again between these two crews. So, uh, looks like Cornwall had the advantage off the line. Looks like Alza Silly's are coming back at them. So, Alza Silly's more boat speed at the moment. Um, they're going to be pushing to. Uh, get past they need to get their cocks past the bow of that blue boat that's all they're going to be worrying about and they've got about three minutes to do it um yeah it's it's, it's also it kind of looks like uh, cornwall now doing their push and slightly starting to come back at them a little bit so very even between these two crews uh, this is very exciting racing 
Uh, there'll be a few uh, shouts from the, uh, the boat. Uh, I'm staying completely neutral, but we do have uh, some members of the, uh, the team that have uh, got some interest in this race. Um, and it's, it, is some, it is some race. It is absolutely even going down. So against St. Mary's, uh, uh, sorry, Ars the Sillies, just starting to have a little bit of a push again. Uh, but I really can't tell from this angle. I don't yeah. know if the drone footage is showing more. Uh, I'm very good at being neutral, Ben. Yeah. Come on, Ars the Silly! <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, but looking at the race at the moment, um, at the moment Cornwall do have advantage over Ars the Silly because Cornwall are overlapping on uh, Ars the Silly for that first mark. Um, Ars the Silly are now really making a huge push for it. They're going to try and get water over Cornwall. They need to get there now. Cornwall need to put on the gas to try and keep the water because the umpire boat is only about five strokes away. This is super tight. I tell you what, if that bow, oh, really hard to call if that bow's over the coxswain or the Isles of Silly crew, who's going to call it? We're going to wait for the call. So Cornwall have got water over uh, Isles of Scilly there, unfortunately. So Isles of Scilly are going to have to make sure that they stay wide and they don't impede on Cornwall's oars. But it depends if Cornwall ease off a bit. If Isles of Scilly speed up, they might have a chance of getting around. So early doors at the day at the moment. So really interesting to see what happens on this mark. So looking at the mark now, Isles of Scilly gone super wide. They haven't got much further, much longer until uh, obviously the second mark. So we'll see what happens there. If I was, I was the silly coxswain, I'll probably try and go wide on this next one and try and tuck up on the inside of Cornwall. But we'll see what happens. But going up to this first mark again is uh, Devon and Dorset. So Dorset on the outside in the black boat, in the white boat is Devon. They got going in real super tight. Dorset have actually gone super wide. And Devon have gone super tight, which has actually slowed the boat down. And Dorset are actually going faster than Devon. But going up to the second mark quickly. I'm sorry, I'm jumping from left to right. Oh, the silly have made a real big attack on a Cornwall here. And they're overlapping. They were behind on their rudder. So this is going to be a literal fight till the end here. This is going to be pretty heated. So we'll see what happens uh, on this one. But I'm just having a quick look where the camera's at. So we're still on the uh, second mark for Devon and Dorset quickly. Like I said, Dorset got water on the inside where Devon uh, went in super tight, slowed the boat down, caused the boat to stop and Dorset went wide and attacked the mark at speed. They were going faster coming out of that second, uh, first mark, which ultimately caused, got them upper spec purely because they got on the inside of Devon and they had water which pushes Devon out. So. There's a real fight on for third place, and there's a real big fight on for first place. This is insane. Uh, really enjoyable, but ours are silly are starting to come through Cornwall. Uh, they're making their little dent now. So this is where both crews really need to keep it calm, need to keep it cool, add the pound on the end of the catch, and just try and row through one another. If you get lose any bit of concentration in this sort of racing, which... Cornwall might do if you lose that concentration the other crew will benefit this is absolutely fantastic and they are level now Isles of Scilly are coming through Cornwall Isles of Scilly might be getting that gold off of Cornwall we'll have to see what happens what are your th thoughts Ben? Yeah I mean uh, Jay is sort of suggesting that the uh, the crew stay nice and calm here uh, it, he's jumping up and down he's, he's excited uh, he's got a little bit of an interest in this race, uh, having done uh, coaching for the uh, Alza Sillies crew. So Alza Sillies have pulled ahead here. They are now the lead boat. Cornwall are in second. Keep your heads up in that Cornwall boat. You can just see, looks like the head's dropping a little bit. So they've got to find something now, Cornwall. Come on, pick it up. Bring us back into this race. It's been fantastic so far. Of the silly, so know that they've just rode past Cornwall, but I, I think Cornwall can find something and bring it back here. 
So this is the closest race we've seen for the Lidl Day. Uh, we have seen Cornwall win every race uh, so far, I believe. So this could be a change here. There's about eight boat lengths left. Uh, Jay's, Jay's jumping up and down. He can't contain himself. It's very exciting. I'm going to pass you back to him. He's going to call this over the line. Yeah, so I think ours are silly. Unless Cornwall do something now, they will jump. They've only got 10 strokes, probably less than that. But ours are silly are here in that varnish boat, Rowan Carrick. They've only got five more strokes. A huge now, big push, boys. That's it. Boom. First place goes to Isles of Silly. Huge effort. Come on, lads. Well done. Put those oars up. Well bloody road to Cornwall, though. Huge effort from those boys as well. The second place. But Isles of Silly are walking away with first place for the under-18s open category. But the race isn't just over just yet. There's only one more medal up for grabs. And that's for third place. And it's going to be between Devon and Dorset here. Devon in the white boat, Len White. And Dorset in the black boat in Offspray. This is tight. It's been like this. I've been looking over my shoulder, looking at where these boats are from the third, uh, th second mark, sorry. And it's been close all the way. And I'll tell you what. It's so close, but I have a feeling that Dorset, yep, Dorset are walking away with third place over Devon. A huge row from these boys as well. Huge, great racing all round. <laughs> I'm going to lose my voice now. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that, that was the best racing we've seen all day. Uh, ours of uh, Silly being the, uh, it's the, the under 18s open, it's the first race uh, that Cornwall uh, have lost today. Uh, but I kind of feel like, I know the Cornwall boys won't feel this at the moment, uh, but really that, that was two sets of winners there. That was absolutely fantastic. Okay, we're going to shoot down. Uh, I think we get one more race in now before we've got to, yeah, we're just waiting uh, just to hear if we can get one more race in uh, before the ship movement. So, yeah, quite interesting on the, uh, on the key there. We've got someone holding up their flag for Cornwall for pride. Like, come on, come up the Cornish. But yeah, hell of a race that one. I think that was the closest one that we've had all day. Um, all the supporters there. A big thanks to our uh, supporter and um, sponsors for today, Plymouth City Bus and Go Cornwall Bus for sponsoring this event today. We are going to take a short break. I didn't actually hear Skipper just now. If we're going for another race, are we? We are going for another race. So we are going to take a quick short break and we'll see you shortly. All the best. Uh, and welcome back. This is a uh, race. <laughs> Losing track where we are. Race 13, under 16 girls. We've got four counties in this crew uh, heat today. So from closest one to us, from the drone footage and camera, I'm not sure which one's on. But uh, the white boat with the black gunnel was uh, Cornwall and Petrock. Uh, the red boat with the blue gunnel was which is Dorset and the light boat, blue boat, Florence is Devon and on the far side rowing the green boat, Catalina is Isles of Scilly but at the moment very close to call but I think Isles of Scilly are just leading the way ever so slightly with Cornwall making quick grounds to take that away from them but as seen before in the races before I think it's more beneficial being on the further side at the moment, being on the inside before the mark. Uh, we'll see what happens on this race, but Cornwall are coming up ever so slowly. What are your thoughts on this one, Ben? Yeah, again, it's, uh, it's other sillies that have gone out hard from the start. Cornwall coming back into it as they kind of get into this next phase. So, uh, yeah, the Cornwall crew looking looking to have a bit more boat speed at the moment uh just looking at the uh the rates just seeing how hard they might be pushing yeah it looks it looks fairly even doesn't it but uh yeah so cornwall in first second place is the Isles of Silly's crew in third place uh in that light blue boat is the devon crew 
uh, and they're, they're fighting hard with four plates, the uh, Dorset crew. Uh, looks like Jay's, uh, Jay's got his list of names ready. He's been practicing his uh, pronunciation. Well, <laughs> trying to hold on, hold on to all the paper without losing them. So yeah, yeah so just as we go through this, this first part of the race, before we get close to the umpire boat, um, I'll just go pass you over to Jay, but he's just ducked down and uh, uh, grabbing bits of paper as they're flying out the back of the boat. Um, getting ready just to give you uh, some of the crew list but just while we're doing that we can see Cornwall's just opening that gap up a little bit on St Mary's. Um, St Mary's just dropping back now a little bit more towards the the Devon and the Dorset crews. Cool so uh, I'm not a uh, favouriting a uh, Isles of Scilly at the moment but it's just easier because their page is separate compared to where everyone else is at the moment um, but the uh, under 16 girls here uh, Coxenham is doesn't look like a Dave to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll scratch that one, but we've got uh, Sadie, Lucy, Rowan, Martha and Charlotte rowing for uh, Isles of Scilly in that boat there. Now I can shift over a page quickly. Cornwall looking super cool here, right, right in front. Um, nice and casual, riding through every straight they're squeezing on at the moment is a uh, pulling away from everyone, uh, but they're doing a fantastic job. Well done to these crew. Um, so at the back is a race for third place, second place at the moment. Um, ours has really got the advantage over Devon at the moment, and Devon have got the advantage over Dorset. As Dorset are behind, I, I would probably say, try and get on the rudder of Devon, go for a bit of a tow potentially. Uh, yeah, I think Devon, Devon are the boat with speed here at the moment, so we can see um, Isles of Scilly have dropped back quite a bit um, and Devon are going past but Devon are on the outside they're just going past the umpire boat now so Isles of Scilly have the water but we're seeing that the Devon crew um, have got more boat speed which they might carry through into the second part of this race so yeah coming up to the first mark now uh, is Cornwall no one to contest them they've gone in super tight which might slow them down a bit so but Isles of Scilly here also going in super tight. Devon might have an advantage here going slightly wider to go a bit of speed. Um, they have slowed down completely. Depending on what Isles of Scilly, because they've gone in super tight, they might slingshot it out a bit. Um, so this is going to be quite interesting racing. We're going to have to adjust the course ever so slightly because unfortunately the ship has come in a bit early. So, um, Cornwall, have, you'll see, we're trying to push everyone to turn this way to carry on the race because there's a ship inbound into the harbour now. So you'll see Cornwall have missed the second mark and also the first mark, everyone's having to turn straight away. Devon are still racing forward. They're not listening to the umpires. The umpires, no, okay, Isles and Devon and Dorset are now about to ram into Devon because they think the race is still going on, but they need to move their asses fairly quickly because there's a ship inbound. So fingers crossed, right. It hasn't affected much because they were all in those positions. It is a shame, obviously, we've had to do it pretty quickly. Um, but for the health, well, for the safety of everyone that's out here, because that ship is not slowing down. So it's a bit of a race on now between the ship that's coming in past the Royal Citadel currently to us getting back to Mount Batten. So a, uh, in second place still at the moment is a uh, Isles of Scilly. Um, third place currently is Devon and in fourth place is Dorset. I hope nothing was broken on those boats as they went in for a clash. It's pretty hard for a coxswain who's concentrating on what the race is doing and then umpire shouting at them, please turn now. Yeah, so uh, obviously the safety of the crews is, is paramount. Uh, just for any nervous uh, parents watching the feed, the ship is still quite a long way away. All the crews are absolutely fine. 
Um, but it's very important that the um, obviously the, the pilots on the, the ship aren't worrying about uh, boats that they can see rowing towards them. So just for safety, there was a call made there to avoid the, or forget about the second mark and just row straight to the finish. Uh, just unfortunately, because one Cox heard the call and the other didn't, um, it, it caused a bit of a coming together. But as Jay said, it, they kind of came out of that clash about where they were. So I don't think it's affected the uh, result of the race. Um, the Cornwall crew have really pulled out quite a lead now on, on the other boats behind. So they're about 10 boat lengths ahead, rowing absolutely beautifully. Um, so this is looking very positive again for a, uh, a Cornwall victory uh, in this uh, under 16s uh, girls race. But yeah, it's second, third and fourth. It's a bit more interesting. So in second place is, uh, is the Arza Sillies crew. Uh, they've got about a boat length and a bit, I think, over the uh, Devon crew, who've got a boat length and a bit over the uh, the Dorset crew. So those crews are still rating each other hard. Um, but I'm going to hand you back now over to Jay as we come in towards the finish line with this uh, Cornish crew. So uh, we've had a few bit of hiccups for you today from miscommunication from Coxing, haven't we? And not listening in. Um, just to reiterate, I think it's really paramount that um, yes, you can get worked up as a Coxing focusing where you are on the race and trying the best solution but what comes most paramount is what the race officials are shouting at you and telling what to do because whatever they say you don't need to try and be obeyed by it straight away that collision that happened earlier obviously I was a silly failed to hear what was going on and then Devon didn't hear which they meant carry on racing and went straight into them but anyway moving on up to a uh, Cornwall here they are three strokes a huge effort from these row uh, they fantastic there we go and they are under 14 champions for the national county championships well done girls a huge effort cut the uh, second corner uh, <laughs> well it's not that obviously that was the race official uh, trying to make some fun but well done with their oars up um, and then coming up in second place will be Isles of Silly like I said earlier it didn't really change much to that collision uh, just a shame that they had to stop rowing. There's nothing worse than midway through a race stopping and then going, uh, oh, I've got to row back. But unfortunately, safety is paramount for these crews. But well done, I was a silly. You'll be walking home with a uh, silver medal today. And then in third place will be Devon taking the bronze. And then Dorset there coming across the line in fourth place. A huge well done to these crews. Fantastic bit of rowing there. So we will be cutting the feed here as this ship that's just come in will be turning around and then reversing, which will take a, a bit of time to do so. A big thanks to City uh, Plymouth City Bus for sponsoring this event, also Cornwall Go Bus. We'll see you soon. Keep an eye out on Gig Rower when we go live again.